Welcome back guys to Keep It Wheel. As you can see we've got a nice uh, Gen 1 booster in the garage. We're going to do a bit, little bit of uh, clutch work on it. I'm sure you're well aware Gen 1 and Gen 2 can suffer from a clutch problem. It's sort of like a snappy jerky uh, weird sensation and it actually stops you doing a fast launch especially at the light. So what we're going to do, we're going to put in a new mod. This is the actual clutch center as you can see. These are normally two separate pieces. You've got this sort of like inner section that locates in keywords at the back and uh, it was Suzuki's attempt at sort of like one of the first slipper clutches it's called like, like a ramp mechanism just didn't work especially on high mileage bikes can cause this slip uh, slipping problem and uh, yeah it's proper annoying so this it's ready and available on the net um, it's a solid welded one so uh, once this is fitted it'll just eliminate that what we're going to do today we're going to go through the process how to fit this and just how easy it actually is to fit it it literally is a 30 minute job so as you can see we've got the eye booster prepped out we've took this side fearing off uh, i'm sure you know how to do that that's why we didn't bore you with the details of going through there uh, what we're going to do is pull the side casing off actually take the clutch to bits replace replace this like we said and we'll take you every step of the way right guys what i've done Quickly just cracked all the 8mm uh, nuts around the outside there, just pulling off some of the actual clips for the, uh, uh, the sensors here. You've got this little um, uh, connector there, just, you just pull the clip up there, I don't know if you can see that, a little clip. Pull it upwards and literally part it like that. Just allows you to get access to these uh, couple of screws, a couple of bolts that are here. Um, what we've done, laid a rag down at the bottom. We're literally going to go around in an anti-clockwise position. What I do is I start at the window so that um, when we go anti-clockwise, that when you replace, start at the window and then go clockwise. So, Andy, quick tip, use a bloody uh, electric drill. So literally, you just whip around, pull them all out, pull them all out, but put them all in, in order so you know where you're starting. That's starting at the window, so on. There you go, that's the last bolt. Uh, like I say, put them all in, in order. So when you replace it in the clockwise position, they're all in the right place. All the bolts out, like we just said. Get yourself a trusty rubber mallet. Quick tap. It should just ease off. You've got a couple of lugs as you pull this out. Just make sure, make sure that they stay in, either in the engine side or in this case inside. I like to put them back in the uh, uh, engine. So you've got one there, one still in situ there. There you go. That reveals the clutch. Next job, crack all the crack these ten mil nuts. There's six of them, and that allows you to get access to the uh, the centre section that we need to replace. Okay, as again, all cracked. In that's a case of just whipping them off. But just try and whip them off in the opposite uh, directions, as in like this one here, one across. It just uh, eases the pressure on the clutch. Okay, that's all the bolts undone. These actual springs then come out. Don't matter which order they go back in. Instead of pulling them all out, just hold that front plate. And then you can just pull them all out there. Right, things to be aware of. Tip this over, tip all the springs out. What you'll notice on the back is a bearing followed by washer. Make sure these go back in this situ, okay? So you've got front plate, you've got washer, you've got bearing. And you've got the centre section out of the clutch there. Just pop that out, put that in, put it out of the way, you know it's all good. This is what you end up with. You end up with six clutch springs, six retaining bolts, and your front pressure plate. This is what we've got to do now. You see this section here? Uh, I think it is a 30 mil socket. Let me just check. Yep, 30 mil. So it's 30 mil bolt. 30 mil nut, sorry. Uh, what you'll see is the, one of these, um, it's, got, it's sort of like got a soft riveted edge on there. You actually, uh, once you've tightened it all up, you just knock this uh, with a uh, flat drift 
just to stop this undoing. Nine times, it, it's not going to do it anyway, but it's just a precaution. So I've got to crack this off with a uh, a power socket, power wrench, and uh, we'll take you to the next stage. Okay, now we're using the power wrench. Crack this. Oh, that came off really easy. There you go, job done. Okay, as you can see, you've got there, you've got the nut, and then you'll see um, a washer inside there. But all this centre will now literally come off. Right, so if we just pull that forward, this is what we're replacing. Now, as you pull this off, you'll notice that this is a concaved washer, which means it's sort of like that shape. Like that, it's bent. So that's actually bent. So when that goes on, you must make sure it's actually cupping this section there. And that goes on, but it's cupping that way. Don't be tempted to put it on backwards like that. This actually acts like a sort of like a spring washer. So that must go that way against. Okay, this is what we're replacing. This is the ramp mechanism type arrangement that um, I was telling you about. So here's the one that we've done. This is the one we prepared earlier. And uh, as you see, this is fixed and it's welded in position. You'll notice that there's two marks in this. So if you did ever as assemble this separately, or uh, you was putting it back to standard, i.e. to flog this part, make sure that these two marks are aligned. It's just how they're machined they are. So yeah, so now it's what the case is, get over to the vise, crack these off, replace them on this, and this can go back in position. Job done. Okay, in the vise, 11 mil socket, crack all these, work around, literally done every one, and they will then be literally placed into this one. There you go. Then we'll put this in the vise, tighten it all up. And go. Right, okay. So what we're left with now, we're left with the welded one. We've uh, replaced all the... Uh, uh, bolts in there from the original. It is good practice to um, drop a bit of Loctite uh, lock thread on there um, Just for extra security. So once we've got that There's the old one. Now it's a case of lining up these um, Keyways with the uh, keyways on there can be a bit fiddly This center basket does move left to right so it is a case of uh, just jiggling it, but there's no special way that it has to go as long as these keyways line up and it sits flush. Okay. So let's have a look. What we've got. So you've actually got your spline that's got to line up. And it, like you say, you can see that turns and then you can see it's there. So if the, you just can't find that keyway and let it drop in, it, it, it is... Uh, just a case of really manoeuvring it and wiggling around the centre just to get it in. You'll notice when it's all the way in, in at home, should I say, because when you put this on, and if you'd screwed that on, the, the main nut, if that's not flush, like this one isn't, then you know this isn't all the way home. Yeah? So, literally, that is a common fault. If people do that... Your clutch just ain't going to work. There you go. A little bit of jiggling. You can see how much thread's now is protruding out of this centre section. It's gone all the way back and it's almost flush. It can take a little bit of fiddling, a little bit of pulling out, realigning, putting in again, a little more twiggling. And yeah, just to get it all in. There's no wrong with a little bit of twiggling. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so once that's in, remember, wash it in, concave section. Uh, screw the centre nut in and it's a case of tying it up with your power wrench ok everything in situ get the old orange rooney on it Jobs are good in. You can see the old keyway there is back in the centre now. 
Um, these tighten up to something like uh, 140 foot pounds, I think, something like this. So make your job really uh, easy. The only other way is to get your power to stand on the back brake, get yourself a power bar and struggle like fuck. So if you've got to make with one of these, tickle his nuts a little bit, <laughs> get him to borrow it, yeah. Job's a corker. Nut talk talk, just riveted over a little section there with a flat drift. Now it's uh, basically uh, reassemble. You've got this little uh, um, elongated T-top section, posh word for it, drops in there. Then you've got your bearing. It's always best to put these on there rather than putting them in this and offering it up. Logical, really. It'll fall in the bottom of the engine, but there you go. Put that in. This doesn't really um, matter where you uh, align it, just as long as it aligns up. So, yeah. And then it's literally putting the springs in. And replacing all your 10 mil nuts. Right, okay, we're all talked up there. I think it's uh, seven Newton meters, which is roughly about nine foot pounds of pressure for the actual, uh, for the actual uh, these 10 mil um, bolts here. We're all done, we're all sorted. Now it's a case of actually putting the casing on, buckling everything up, fairing back on, job done. Just a quick word about this uh, modification and where to get it. Like I say, um, these are available, if you get yourself on the TL forum, uh, TL zone I think it's called, something like that. There's a chap on there called Mr. Sam Matthewman. Now these are the same as the TLR 1000. It's a six pin clutch. And the, like I say, the internals are exactly the same. So he does a lot of uh, modifications for the TL1000R and the TL1000S. Um, so you can get a six pin clutch and you get a five pin clutch for some of the TLSs. But you're wanting a six pin, so he normally uh, does this modification for you. It's uh, a sort of like a sale and return type thing. You, um, He'll send you one out. There'll be a deposit until you send your one back and he'll refund that back to you. Um, we'll leave a link in the description for that. Um, like I say, it literally is TL, it's the TL zone. So get yourself on there, look for Sam Matthewman, and uh, you can contact him via that. Um, it is a well worthwhile modification. There are some kits out there that they supply a, a sort of like a 5mm spacing ring that locates onto the back of this. It virtually does the same thing, but depending on how, how worn your clutch is, can depend on uh, the levels of um, how it works. I've tried these and with a lower mileage booster, Gen 1 or Gen 2 with a lower mileage booster, it works fine. But um, I've got about 30,000 of my Gen 1. And although it, it just gets by using one of those ring um, kits, it just weren't cutting it. So that's why I changed to this, the welded version, more direct, and a proper fix of the old Gen 1. Now it's just a case of, like I say, buckling everything up and jobs are good in. Hope this video has helped you out, guys. Um, we'll be doing a lot more on the old uh, Gen 1 booster. They seem to be getting a bit thin on the ground nowadays, especially in standard trim with just a few minor mods like this. Um, we all now have boosters and we're still keeping it wheel. Until next time, guys, please like and subscribe and keep it wheel.